Hi everyone, so we're back. Let's now continue with payback period. Now we've looked at accounting rate of return or ARR, which was an accounting measure. So now we'll start with the financial measures. Now, as you guys recall for your financial measures, the method of return should be your net cash flows. So we'll start with the payback period, which is a very popular method. And the reason why payback is very popular is very simple to understand because payback measures the time taken by the cash inflows or net cash flows generated by the project to cover the cash outflows, which is your initial investment. When we talk about inflows, we, did, we will refer to inflows as everything that the business has received after paying off all its variable cost or fixed cost. And when we talk about outflows, we're primarily referring to the investment that the business had to make initially or in the earlier years and our job over here is to determine that when will our net cash flows or our returns cover our initial investment. So if we were to just discuss the basic advantages of payback, I've listed them down. Number one, it's very easy and simple to understand. I think payback is very easy to explain to any investor who does not have accounting or financial background, which is why it becomes a very commonly used method. Number two, cash flows are more accurate than profits. Remember, profits also include a subjective element where you, the firm might have to determine the rate of depreciation, the provision for doubtful debt. These are subject elements and they could be manipulated or depend on the manager's discretion. Whereas the cash flow is a more accurate method, which is why financial managers always prefer cash flow over profits. They also reduce the risk by preferring early cash flows so remember when we'll be using the payback period, we'll be determining that which project will recover our money earlier. The faster that a project can recover your money, the more better it would be for the firm because they would want to get their money back. And it also helps us focus on the liquidity aspect, right? Then certainly for firms which have limited cash, they have liquidity issues for them. It would be very important to recover the investment and they would make the decision not on value maximization, but rather on the fact that which project is recovering their investment earlier and it would help them to use that cash or rotate that cash. And it's a very useful first screening tool. So we, so we can say payback becomes a very useful screening tool that firms would want to start off by looking at the project and then look at the other methods. But obviously payback would also have some drawbacks. We can also talk about the disadvantages so number one, the disadvantage is payback would ignore the time value of money. Now the time value of money is a very important concept in the world of finance. We'll discuss that very soon in the coming videos, but it does not take into account any opportunity cost of money. It ignores cash flows after payback is achieved. So the payback period only focuses till the time that you recover the money, but it does not look at the project once the money or the investment has been recovered. Next, it does not provide an absolute measure, which means that you have to compare the payback to an another machine's payback. So you, you cannot judge payback just on that basis. You have to compare it to other investments. It also ignores the absolute size of investment outlay because our job over here is to just see when that outlay is being recovered, not the magnitude or the size of the outlay. And finally, it ignores the timing of the cash flow. A very good example is that we can have two projects, their paybacks could be the same, but the timing of the cash flows can be different. So it can differ in, let's say one project is paying off a higher cash flow in year one, whereas one project is paying a higher cash flow in year two. And hence it does affect your liquidity because if you receive a greater proportion of cash flow in year one, that might be better for the firm. Right. So these are some of the aspects that are not considered by the payback period. You guys should have an idea of advantages and disadvantages as that is very commonly discussed on examinations. All right. Now, if I go back to this example, we saw this example for ARR as well. We've also calculated the cash flows. So over here, we had this company that was buying a new product line tanker and was buying this machinery. We had the cost available 200,000, the life, the scrap value, we had the revenue receipts and expenses. Now, as you guys know, from now onwards, we'll only use net cash flow as a return for financial measures and profit will, will only be used for ARR. 
So if I take you guys over here, this is the net cash flow that we calculated for this question, right? All we, all we did was from the expenses, we removed the depreciation since that's an accounting expense and not a cash outflow. And we got our net cash flows. We also included the scrap in the last year. Right now we have these net cash flows for each year. Using this, we have to find the payback period. So what we'll do is we'll draw this table over here. You guys should also get used to drawing this table. I've written down all our net cash flows. So year zero is your investment year that you're making 200,000 investment. And against that, you'll receive these net cash flows in year one, year two, year three, year four. Now, the payback period essentially determines a very simple question. And, and I think this is one of the easiest methods to learn. So you guys should get this really well and, sh and should not be confused about it. So what will happen is that you have to recover 200,000. Now you have to answer this question. When will this firm recover back its 200,000? So let's learn to answer that question. Now we know in year one, the firm has recovered or earned 85,000. So in the cumulative cash flow section, I can say in total, the firm has recovered 85,000, right? So I have already recovered 85,000. Now in year two, the firm earns another 70,000 as net cash flow. So 85 has already been earned. 75 is being added to your net cash flows now. So if you add this up, you'll get 155,000 as your cumulative cash flow. So I've already recovered 155,000. Remember our job over here is to recover 200,000. By year two, I've recovered 155. So when you earn 90,000 next in year three, so after 155, 90 gets added. So if I see cumulative cash flows will now be 245,000 if I add 155 plus 90. Right now, over here, you guys need to stop because we have now actually gone past our investment. We had to recover 200,000 and we've gone past and we've recovered 245,000. Now we have an idea that what we recovered our money somewhere between year two and year three. That's the time period when we recovered our investment. But, but we need to find the exact month as well. So what we need to determine is that after 155, how much did we have to recover? So if 200,000 was our objective, and we had recovered 155 over here, what we can say is we had to recover essentially 45,000 in this period. That's the amount I was looking to recover. That's 200,000 minus 155,000. I had to recover 45,000 more. So we can do the simple calculation. We can say we had to recover 45,000 out of 90,000. What's 90,000? Let me highlight that. That's the cash flow that we recovered this year. But we do not want to know about the 90,000. We just want to know when did we recover this 45,000, the remainder that we had to recover. And the total recovery for this year was 90,000. So, and if you multiply that by 12, the number of months, we can say we exactly recovered 45,000 in six months. You guys can also think of it like this. If 90,000 has been recovered in 12 months, then we recovered 45,000, which is exactly half of that in six months time. Now, what we can say after that, after that, we can say the payback becomes two years and six months. It takes the firms two full years over here and six months more to recover their investment of 200,000. That's their payback period. All right. So the payback period essentially answers this question that how long does it take the firm to recover their initial investment? And as you guys can see, that it ignores any cash flows after its recovery.